Okay, uh, I'm Raleigh Strauss. I'm interviewing Elmer Oren this morning. It's the 18th day of October 2010, and uh, we're going to have this as a record for the Ames Historical Society Museum. Uh, we'll start at the back, at the beginning, and kind of work through it. So this is Elmer Oren right here. Good morning. <laughs> and he's now retired and enjoying life in a beautiful apartment with a painting that is, his mother did right on the wall here, beautiful work. So uh, start out if you can, where were you born and uh, when this all started, Elmer? Well, I was born in Lamar's, Iowa on April 8, 1922. Okay. My dad was a minister and my wife was uh, a minister's wife and an artist. She okay. painted pictures like this in China and uh, had her own kill. Okay. And uh, beautiful, beautiful work. And she taught taught art in college over in Lamar's, Iowa, where where I was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that little church church college at Lamar's, Western Union College. Okay. And after I graduated from Fort Dodge High School in 1941. And that was in Fort Dodge. Yeah. Okay. This is the, that's the last place we lived while I was still growing up. Okay. So I graduated from Fort Dodge High School in 1941. And uh, right after graduation, I, I, I knew Lamar's. We'd been back and forth from Fort Dodge to Lamar's sure. many times. Mm -hmm. So I hitchhiked from Fort Dodge <laughs> straight across Highway 5, I think it was, to Lamar's, 120 miles enrolled at Western Union College. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'd like to give you these now, if I may. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, these, these are uh, some of the things that we got after we, re after we uh, were put out of the Army. Okay, he and was in the 11th Armored uh, Tank Corps going across Europe and, and everything. We'll hear more about that later. Yeah, right. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I and many of my cohorts have had many reunions Good. since. And this is a, a picture of, of a reunion t taken in, I think it's uh, August of 1989. And here's a, here's a picture you can have. I've circled a picture of good looking me, huh? <laughs> Bunch of good looking tank drivers. <laughs> <laughs> and the first battle we, we uh, were involved with is it was a little town 15 miles south of Bastogne, Belgium, called Acul, A C U L. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I took my wife over there, I took a picture. I found the spot where we had fought. When did you go back with your wife? In 1984, September. Okay. And the date, some dates are on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh yeah, here's Margaret, Belgium, where we fought also. And here's a picture. Again, which we took. Very authentic with the road signs in German. <laughs> yeah. And here, so when I took when I took Marvel back to uh, back over there, why we stopped at Bastogne, Bastogne, Belgium, and and the I think it's a Fourth Army tank uh, the U.S. Army gave to to the area, and this is a. Typical Sherman tank, couple of pictures. Yes, okay. You can have. So you left one as a souvenir mm -hmm. for the town. Good, yeah. good. Then these are are pictures of a cigar factory in Linz, Austria. And uh, I'll tell you more about that as I go along. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I showed Marvel Nice, France. Where I did take, where, where my buddies and I had a, a break during the war, so I showed her where I, where I took a break down the, down on the shore of Nice, France. Looked like they were having fun down on the, the white sand of yeah. the shore. Right. Okay. Now I'd like to also give you a a map, and I have circled on here in red all the places where where I went and and we fought. Okay. Oh, that's great with the red circles. Yeah. Were you uh, landing with the troops on D-Day? No, no. 
Okay, you were already in, come, did you come up from Italy? I'll bring it to you now. Okay. Okay, let's start way back though, when okay. you were in high school and then you went to college. Yeah, here's where we are. Okay. So I enrolled in Western Union College in right. Lamar's. Right. And <clears throat> and I, I was a freshman, of course, from 40. Bring it to you now. Okay. Okay. Let's start way back though, okay. when you were in high school and then you went to college. Yeah, here's where we are. Okay. So I enrolled in Western Union College in right. Lamar's. Right. And <clears throat> and I, I was a freshman, of course, from 41 to 42. Okay. And so in, in September of 42, why <clears throat> my buddies and I there. By the way, my buddies at West, Western Union College, the college is long gone by now. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, my buddies were all preacher's kids. Oh, okay. And from Nebraska and, and Iowa. Mm -hmm. And so uh, four, about four of us were real close. So anyway, we heard about the Enlisted Reserve Corps. Somebody told us okay. we could join the Enlisted Reserve Corps and then we could finish college before we had to be active. I said, oh, heck. So we four got in a car and drove over to, to uh, southern, uh, oh, what the heck was, South Dakota. Okay. Or, or not it. Decor, okay. Where we had to go, not far. We all signed up. My, and, my, and they gave me my army number. A volunteer number, of course, starts with one. Okay. Uh, as you probably know, uh, if you're drafted, it starts with three. Yes, yes. So my number they gave me is 170 534 Yeah, I still remember my ID number <laughs> when I was in the Army, yeah. Anyway, so we went back to classes, and lo and behold, they, they pulled us out. <laughs> they passed the draft. <laughs> well, later we found out why, but that's, that's another story. So in February of 40... Uh, 42. Or, or be, be 43 then. Yeah. Why, uh, they, they uh, hauled us out, put us on a train. Of course, we had trains all over Iowa. Oh, yes, they, right. They put us on, these four guys, me and three others, and took us down to Camp Dodge where we got all our shots and army okay. uniforms and all that stuff, but not college. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not before. Anyway, then, <clears throat> then after a couple weeks there, why, they took us by train again down to Fort Leonard with Missouri. Okay. Where we, we were training to be combat engineers. Right, right. Well, that was three months of basic training. Well, lo and behold, we found out, hey, why don't we sign up for OCS? See if we can, sure. see if we can go. So all four of us went into the office and signed up for OCS. Wow, that's neat. Well, wouldn't you know, two weeks later, we found out that Army Specialized Training Program, ASTP. Okay. We could sign up for that and go back to college in the Army. So we all four went back to the office, tore with, up our OCS papers and threw the, away. With the Army paying for it. Yeah. Well, we threw away the OCS app. Never were app. Well, four of us never did go back to us to go to ICS. Anyway, then after training there, and of course we learned how to put up bridges over their water and yes. bombs and all that stuff. And then they put us on a train and, and took us to Pullman, Washington. Yes, okay. Washington State College at that it's time. It's there now, yeah. Yeah, university of course. Well, we, uh, they took over a, uh, a great ladies dormitory, beautiful, okay. on the campus. Took everything out of it, of course, and put army bunks in there. Yes, yeah. Stripped it down so it wasn't very pretty, but yeah. it was better than some places. Better than a tent. <laughs> yeah, so then, of course, every morning we'd fall out, and there's a beautiful, out in front was a big slope on the, on the street. Mm -hmm. So we, all 150 of us, would fall out by, by platoons. Yes. So there are about 30 of us in there. And 
about Sully and all that good stuff. Oh yes, yes. And and uh, <clears throat> anyway, so we were we we were in school then. So uh, uh, and we thought we'd have at least a year there, of course. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't you know, they pulled us out a month early. <laughs> and again, we didn't know why. But again, later we found out why. That's at the university in Pullman in Washington yeah, State. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, they put us on that other train. All four of us were in the same group yet. Well, at least you stayed together. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, anyway, they pulled us out, and then we, we took a train down to Camp Cook, California. Yes, okay. And that now is an Air Force base, I think. It is, I think, now. Well, that's where the 11th Armored Division was headquartered, the whole okay. division. Okay. I think it was 14,000 men. Yeah. And we learned soon that they were a worn-out outfit. They'd been there. They'd been in training for three years. Oh, wow. Way down in the southeast corner of the United States. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, I a lot of us thought, hey, we young kids, yeah. college kids. Uh, they were pretty smart. They scattered us throughout the division. Okay. Then the old timers were training us. You bet. You bet. So, so they they assigned the four of us to the 22nd Tank Battalion. So they you can, stayed in the same battalion. Yeah. Out of the division, but in different companies. A company. A company. A company. Okay. All of us. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> then they showed us how to how to drive the tank and how to shoot the cannons and everything else. Right. And um, <clears throat> we learned about, well, everything there was. And mm -hmm. we learned that there are four engines that, yes. that they had. The one we trained in was a radial engine of all things, like an airplane. Yes, yes. Five, five or seven cylinder. Well, another one was well, the craziest. They had five, I think it was five little flathead Six cylinder engines oh, timed together. Five of them. Okay. I never saw one, but they told us about it. Well, that, they said that wasn't what the hood, of course. Well, I believe that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Not a can that all together, I'll never understand. But anyway, then, uh, and we learned also that diesels in Sherman tanks were over in the Pacific and not in Europe. Okay. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, when, I, when I get to the point where we got our new tanks, Mm -hmm. In the new tanks in, in England, which we got them, I'll tell you later, they were a beautiful V8 or V12 or something, monster engine, beautiful. Uh, twin carburetors oh, okay. at that time. Okay. Five gallons of oil in the crankcase. Oh, wow. So they were big, uh, water cooled. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so. So we learned all about those things. Let me interrupt you a little yeah, bit here. When you're in the division in California, was uh, Patton the it's leader on. of the division? He was not he there. He was over in the war already. He was in the war in Africa, probably? I don't know. Okay, okay. He, that was 43. Uh, and your division commander then in California was, uh, yeah. was he a colonel or what? Uh, general. He was a general, yeah. okay. okay. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, so, <clears throat> in October of 44, by now, uh, October, yeah, October 44. 1944, well, they put us on a train again, yes. <laughs> and the whole division. Okay. And of course, uh, my train load, wouldn't you know, went right through Fort Dodge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and 10 blocks from my folks' house, yeah. I couldn't get off or away oh, or no, anything. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I never forgot that. Well, then a, uh, an English ship mm -hmm. took us across the ocean. Well, excuse me. A train after, uh, the train went on the East Coast. Yeah, sure. And in New Jersey, somewhere in New Jersey, why well, they gave us overseas shots. Mm -hmm. And they trained us how to crawl up the great big net on the boat, yes. on the yep. ship, and down. <laughs> that was a, interesting. <laughs> and, uh, and not easy either. No, it's, it wasn't. It, it's <laughs> tough to climb that net. Uh, uh, the fellow who was my, ended up being my tank 
tank commander uh, lived not far away, so he snuck out at night and went home. Okay. Came back the next, late the next morning or something. Anyway, <clears throat> so so we landed in, in in somewhere in England, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, trucks took us. Uh, I think there was some area, in, I think in the southern part of England. I'm not sure where or now at all. Okay. But anyway, they. <clears throat> I guess, no, they took us by train down. Anyway, they took us to an area where the whole battalion could be uh, bivouacked, if you will. Okay. Barracks and all yeah. food and everything. And uh, <clears throat> we were there for oh, about probably a week or so. Then they put us on trucks, mm -hmm. army trucks, of course, because they were the uh, groundskeeper or whoever was there were all ready for it. They took us east back over to the shore where all the brand new American Sherman tanks were. Ah, oh, okay. And <clears throat> they assigned one to Hobling and I. Mm -hmm. And Hobling was the driver at the time. Okay. So I was up at the top and uh, where the... In the gun turret? Yeah, up yeah. above. Mm -hmm. Right. With the open turret. And... Uh, <clears throat> And we drove drove back down to the camp, and then we decosmolined all the, all of the parts that you know the rust. Right. And that geez, that took two or three days. Well, I'll bet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, then we had the fun. Yeah. I took a tank and, and had him up at the top, and we go out in this beautiful countryside. And, and just, still, still in England. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're, we're breaking in the tank. Yeah. Back in those days, still had to break in engines and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Sure. So we had fun running all over, skidding around. Nobody would get in your way to stop you. <laughs> no, no, that was the most fun of the day. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> then uh, uh, then they assigned people right then and there to tanks. So they assigned me to A A five. The tank uh, number. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Anyway, <clears throat> first platoon, whatever. So, A company. Anyway, there were five in the platoon. Right. And and uh, and I, I I was assigned to be, be the bow bow gun. Okay. The bog. And he's the assistant driver and the machine gunner, up right front. Mm -hmm. And hobbling uh, was assigned to be the driver. He was, he was down in the belly, in yeah, front. Down yeah, down in the front. And I was down in the lower right front mm -hmm. with the machine gun that you had these yes. tracers on. Right. Well, up in the up in the turret, of course, we had oh, George, George, somebody with the loader. Okay. And <clears throat> and I, I could turn around and look through the the great grill mm -hmm. to see their feet and legs. Oh, sure. Up on the turret. In, inside of the tank, yeah. And, and, and uh, Sport, John Sport was the gunner. Okay. And Jimmy Brett was the tank commander. Oh, okay. So Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy Brett could, could sit down on a chair right behind the gunner. Mm -hmm. uh, or stand up with the yeah. hatch open. But did so, he turn with the turret? And everything yeah, down with it, the cannon, okay. All of that was in one one. Well, okay. Uh, as you probably know, a tank weighs thirty four tons. Yes, right. And each tread, each track two two tons. Yeah. And the turret itself, including of course the gun and the stuff like that, mm -hmm. is about eight tons. Right, right. So they're pretty heavy. Yeah. Well the cannon the cannon was a seventy five millimeter. Okay. And uh, and and out the same area and pointed the same way was a 30 caliber machine gun also. Yes, okay. And of course the gunner could use both of those. Or either one, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, anyway, <clears throat> so one day then we, we drove them back over to the coast and we loaded up, we drove right into the LST. Well, so you were driving a tank, not on no, the truck anymore. No, I'm okay. sorry, I wasn't yet. 
Well, but the tank under yeah, its own power yeah, went yeah, on the LSD. Yeah, we were, ready, we were ready to go. Okay. No ammo quite yet. But, uh, but Hob drove us right in the, right in the LST. You know what they are, landing ship yes. tank. Oh, yes. And it, as I remember, it held our whole company of 18 tanks. Well, it's, it's 15 tanks plus the captains. Yeah, okay. And a tank recovery vehicle, two trucks, and two jeeps. And the, the, the Americans who, who, who operated that LST told us that when, we, when they dump us off, they're going to play basketball on the court. Oh, okay. yeah. We could see the baskets. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so they took us across the channel. Well, of course, you remember D-Day was in June of 44. Yes. So thank God, by that time, they cleaned up all the, all the shores. The beachheads yeah. they were all done already. Yeah. So... About the, when did you get there then after the D-Day in June? This was early December. So you were six, Just a eight, few months later. Seven, seven months later. Yeah. Okay. So we dropped the uh, dropped the, uh, the front of the front end and, of the LST. And away we went yeah. in, in order. Of course, the the, the captain uh, of the uh, of the of the company, a company, had his tank first. Right. Followed by one, two, three, four, five. So I was in five as a gunner yet. And we and they drove off in column, and uh, uh, we couldn't. Let's see. Excuse me. Were the advanced landing troops already to Paris by then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, the first thing we saw as we drove along was one square block, twenty, thirty feet high of just food. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they'd gotten ready for this. Yeah. We had. American. Yeah. Another block, ammo. Square uh -huh. block. Oh, my God. Well, we drove on past all that in column, and then we, we camped. Getting nightfall, I guess. We camped along a, uh, somewhere over there in the shore in France. And, and the next morning, then, we uh, road marched as fast as we could go. And the, the 11th Armored Division was was honored for being the fastest moving division ever. Really? Okay. Just go like mad. Well... Uh, who I, was the division commander at this time? Was Patton in the scene? Not yet. Not yet? Not okay. Yet. Not until we got into battle. Okay. But anyway, so we rode marched way up to the front. And uh, as uh, we drove right through Paris and waved at the girls, of course. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't put a name on board. No, <laughs> no, no. And we could see the Eiffel Tower and all that yeah. stuff. And went right on. And it got colder, colder, colder. Here we are in, later in December now. Oh, yeah. Of uh, 44. And uh, <clears throat> some more snow, more snow, more snow. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't you know, they, they, uh, they had our our company, Company A, 22nd Tank Battalion, uh, I don't know, anyway, in the snow, of course. Yeah. And we, we could barely see a road if there was one, but we made our own anyway. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we drove up behind, uh, behind a nice hill, and uh, And they had uh, uh, a first and second platoon. Mm -hmm. Our five tanks and, uh, and another five backed up behind the ridge, and all all of us guys in those tanks they had to get out. Okay. And we carefully walked up to the top, <coughs> two feet of snow yet. And I had boots on and underwear twice. Oh yeah, combat yeah. boots, combat outfit, and the whole works. And of course the. Our color was like, like this, as I remember, mm -hmm. for the outside, and and uh, we could we could see holes and hear beaming and crash and stuff like that. But uh, and then we got out back in the tanks and put on our headsets because you can't hear anything in a yeah. tank. 
and we could hear everybody talk if we're supposed to. Yeah. And and then the uh, <clears throat> then on December 30th of 1944, we were at that time by a coup. Okay. And uh, again, two feet of snow. And and five the first. The second platoon went around the left of this little square village. Okay. The village was only about a, a block square also. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it had a, one beautiful, great big colonial home. Okay. We could see Germans in the windows. So Germans were in that, yeah. that town. Okay. And it was, it, I don't know if it was foggy or what. We could not see over the, beyond all that, way up in the slope, snowy slope over there. Mm -hmm. We learned later there were cannons galore. Okay, I'll, I'll interrupt you again ahead, here a little ahead. bit. Was there a pause in your activities on Christmas Day in '44? Did, did the Germans recognize Christmas and the Americans did? And I've heard often that they just everybody quit fighting for Christmas Eve. I don't remember. Okay, okay. In fact, <clears throat> you triggered another thought. Yeah. On Christmas Day, see, we weren't we, we weren't clear up there yet. You weren't known. There wasn't snow. You got there on the 30th, so. Yeah, so uh, so we put on duck, duck. With the olive duck drive? Duck. Oh, okay, okay. On the tracks. Okay. On the outside of the, outside yeah, of each right. of the outside tracks. I'll walk you through the snow. And yeah. boy, that took hours. I'll bet. Took, but they're heavy. Yeah, huh? well, we took a sledgehammer to drive off the pin and then put a new one in. And, so that's where, what we spent Christmas. Oh, okay. The, the uh, cooks, though, had, had that nice dinner for us. Yeah. That's all I remember about Christmas. Roast turkey and here you are pounding <laughs> on the tank trench. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, 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 second platoon went around the left of this village. Mm -hmm. and, and, <clears throat> and our captain, our CEO, Captain Smith, of our our company A. Yeah. His tank, he had his tank driving around the right right side, in the snow, of course, down the slopey hill. Of course, there are trees all over back there. Sure. They're pretty. But anyway, <clears throat> bam! Well, then we were still, the others of us were still in columns, kind of, 20, 30 uh, feet at least behind each other. And we, and we could see the the, his driver was had him way down there. All of a sudden, his right the star on his right side disappeared. Ooh, okay. So we knew something was <laughs> something yeah, something was up. Been hit, yeah. So <clears throat> uh, the second tank then, which was A one, mm -hmm. uh, headed down, and I don't know whether it was his or the second one. We got hit the same way. Okay. And but there were a lot of booms and shells. You could hear it. You could even hear it. Was it some of the the big guns yeah. that the Germans had? We okay. learned later it was big 88s. So yeah. Was okay. Okay. But anyway, so <clears throat> and when the tank got hit, of course everybody could get out. Did. Yeah. yeah. And we could see our guys crawling out of their tanks. So oh like that. yeah, it was we tough to get out. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know it was gone or not, but. But anyway, uh, we were still just putting along because we were the fifth tank, mm -hmm. and so we had to. Well, we didn't have to. We watched all this. I was down with my gun, you know, and looking yeah. through the periscope with my headset on, and hobbling was over across the transmission, the same. Yeah. And he was going back and forth, just keep it moving. Oh yeah. And <clears throat> and. Uh, Boom! And I go, oh my gosh, because the tank shot. Shoot. Okay, okay. And <clears throat> I turned around and looked through the grill, and there's all smoke. Oh, in the turret. Yeah. Okay. So I go, uh oh. So I, so I said, well, I'm open my hatch and get, get the heck out of here. Well, when you know, the gunner had the cannon right over my hatch. I couldn't oh. get out. <laughs> so I reached across the. Transmission said, "Hob, get out of here." He didn't. Think, he took all day. 
I literally crossed across, crawled over the transmission. Well, yeah, that's tough in a tank, yeah. And I helped him open the doggone hatch, helped him get out. And was he injured or just? Not at all. Just not able? <laughs> yeah. He wasn't in a hurry. I don't yeah. know why. But anyway, as soon as he got out, I got on that seat and I choom, double yeah. right out in the snow. Well, then we we crawled back and back, back where we thought we were going back. And we hoped we were. And sure enough, we did. We, well, with the grease and stuff from greasing the tank and all that stuff, yeah. those outfits on me and everybody else were bleached white. Because oh, we yeah. crawled in the snow, and as soon as we hear an 88 come over, shoo, yeah. dive in and crawl, crawl, crawl. Two feet of snow, yeah. Cold, cheap, God. Yeah, I'll bet. Well, fortunately, we got back up to the top, and we were at the right place. Oh, boy. <laughs> so we were darn lucky. But anyway, while, uh, before, uh, before all that, I forgot something. <laughs> uh, when I was, when we were slowly going down the hill, mm -hmm. when I was looking at this upstairs colonial house, <clears throat> and, and I saw these Germans in the windows. Yeah. So I got the old 30 caliber going, and of course you used tracers. Yeah. And I, I moved her right back up, and I, I creamed out perfect square window. In that nice and, house. And I, did, <laughs> and I did another one. And the guys weren't there then. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but anyway, that was, and just after that's when I, when I got hit. Yeah. Well, anyway, once we crawled back over the hill, why, we tried to check and see who was, who was and wasn't. And uh, we couldn't even tell half the time yet. So, but you abandoned the tanks in place yeah. and crawled back, okay. And Hob left our tank in gear, slowly moving. Oh, really? Thank God, it was only slowly moving. Well, eventually it, it ran out of gas or stopped. So Was he in we, reverse or? Yeah. Okay. So back up the hill, fortunately. Well, when we looked back down, we could see this creek yeah. going through this little village of Acool. And, and, Snow and ice blowing all over the place, and black uh, sod and everything. Of course. Well, then they had us walk all the way back two or three miles to a nice village. Okay. And they put us up there. They took over somebody's nice house. Sure. And probably the first bed you'd slept in for quite a while. Well, it wasn't much of a bed, but <laughs> whatever it was, it was a good deal. Better than an army bunk. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Uh, and that gets you to about the end of 1944. Yeah, this was this was it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you're going through your notes here almost as fast as you were driving that tank across yeah, France. I talked ahead of my notes. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, three days later, I caught up. Three days later, they took us in a truck, and we went back up to see what was left. And uh, sure enough, uh, my tank, my tank commander, Jimmy Brett, was blown to pieces. Okay. But thank God, all the bodies were gone. The loader was injured. The gunner, who was well, Jimmy, the tank commander, <clears throat> unfortunately left his. His hatch is open. Oh, okay. And we found out later a rocket, a German rocket, just came and hit this it left this lid, yeah. literally blade away. But of course, the gunner's head was right in front of this guy's stomach. Yeah. So he had an aching back for two years. Oh boy. Uh, John Sport. We saw him later at the at a reunion. At a reunion, yeah. But anyway. Uh, uh, anyway, we. Uh, uh, hobbling the driver, mm -hmm. uh, recharged the batteries. Okay. And and I carefully got up in the turret and and directed him, and he drove us back. I don't know how far. You were the navigator, so. yeah. And that probably saved our lives, really. Yeah, so you, you got that. You were in Belgium. Bastogne, Belgium. Yeah, at, at a cool. Yeah, and so got the tank started again and went back 
Okay. Probably oh, 10 miles or so. Yeah. And fortunately, we had to stay there about, oh, gee, a month or two. No, not quite. Okay. But anyway, so I say again, that's probably saved our lives. Yeah. And this would be in early 1945 then? Yeah, early 45. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, then they were, once all that was taken care of, they reorganized the, the, our company. Mm -hmm. And they made me a driver. Okay. So I was driver of A5. And uh, uh, Ernie Stitch became my tank commander. So we were, we were back in, back in the, back in the fighting then. Sure. Well, we rode, rode, marched here and there and everywhere. Finally, we went over the Vermagen Bridge. Mm -hmm. It's marked there someplace. Right here. Oh, okay. That was fascinating. Because <clears throat> later on, when I took Marvel, my wife, back over there, I, I showed her that bridge. It was fascinating. That one didn't get blown up. They tried to many times. But okay, you're, you're getting pretty close to the Rhine River then, weren't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. yeah. Okay. So then, northwest of Linz, Austria, by uh, the Russians were, we met the Russians. Yeah, okay. They were coming, of course, from the west, and we were going east. And, and, and in a beautiful valley, we could see, uh, we, we were, our tanks were parked up on this slope, and, and there's a beautiful road through the woods and then down through the valley, and we, we could see this, and they weren't ours, vehicles coming. Yeah. Sure enough, they were the Russians. So, so they had gone pretty well across Czechoslovakia and Germany by then. Apparently, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, we met and uh, couldn't speak any to sure, each other, sure. of course, but anyway, and wouldn't you know, we captured a, a German general in, in a, uh, a, a, a 1941 Czechoslovakian car. Oh, wow. <laughs> and of course, his, his captains or whoever was driving it. But it was a, a rear engine with a nice fin on the back. Oh, okay. it was cute. But anyway, uh, we kept all the vehicles and, and put them on trucks and sent them on back toward our area. It's unusual to hear you say now, it was cute. Yeah. In the war, there wasn't, wasn't yeah. anything, it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> so once the Russians were gone, why my, my platoon of five mm -hmm. tank crew, five tank guys, five tanks, yeah. we took over the vehicles and we, we raced them up and down the hill. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and we had fun. Well, then, what, what, then, they, then the, somebody in the, over the radio said, okay, get back in those tanks and get back up here. So, so, <laughs> so we put sugar in the gas tanks and ruined all the cars for them. <laughs> How much and, gasoline did each tank hold then? How far could you go with a full tank of gas? There were four tanks, two on each yeah, side. Yeah, right. And I don't remember. You could probably go 100, 150 miles well, before I, you... I would imagine close, yeah. close to yeah. it. But, Anyway, well, about that time the war ended. Yeah, okay. And then we drove our tanks back to Linz, Austria. And okay, to Austria. all the army was taken out. And we parked them all in a great big field. There were hundreds and hundreds of German, or our tanks, Sherman tanks, side by side, about a foot apart in this field. Oh, wow. And I, I've forgotten now, but I think the, uh, the, uh, I think in America, we Americans gave those, I think. Oh, wow. To the people there to melt down. Or That's whatever. a lot of steel. Oh, gosh. And just to clarify that, you're, you're saying Sherman tanks, not German tanks. No, right. Just Sherman, Sherman tanks. tanks. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. That would almost settle that whole field out of sight. Yeah, it would. Yeah. yeah. Well then, and trucks, they took a bunch of us back to Linz, Austria, in this lovely building yeah. that the cigar factory was in over there in the picture. Okay, okay. And <clears throat> and they made our outfit into a post office, army post office. Okay. <laughs> so I I was doing the uh, write on. Uh, 
I don't know, I've forgotten what, but c correcting addresses or something. Yeah. So we were there a few weeks at least. That must have been a huge problem for the mail to keep up with the, the oh, soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Because their address, maybe not even the same company anymore. Maybe yeah. they got shifted. Right. Yeah. Well, that must have been a big job. How yeah. the heck they ever did that, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, by that time it was December 45. Yeah, okay. And they took us. And Patton was down south further than you were then. He crossed the Rhine River south of where you were at, didn't he? Yeah, well, our division was under Patton for yeah, through yeah. all of that. Okay. That's all I know. We saw him a couple of times. You did see him, yeah. okay. okay. Waved at him. And <laughs> He's a pretty proud individual, wasn't he? Well, you've heard, of course, he died later on over there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, the trucks then in December of 45 took us way down into a beautiful valley, Riddlewinkle, and we had Christmas there. Okay, in 45, okay. okay. Then, <clears throat> after a few days, they drove us back to France, and, uh, and we got on board ship, and they took us back to the New York Harbor. Okay. And now, then, when did the Germans surrender then? That was, well, it was, wasn't it June 45, I think. Yeah, I would say it was in the, the middle of 45 yeah. somewhere, but yeah. in June, okay. Could have been early June. Okay. So know, as you, you captured a German general or something, the fighting was already done by that time. Yeah, oh yeah. He was probably just driving around enjoying the scenery. <laughs> and, okay, okay. Well then, uh, let's see, a lot of us went to some camp in Illinois, where we were discharged, and the train brought me back to Fort Dodge. Fort Dodge, okay. Then, in February of 1946, why two buddies of mine from Fort Dodge High School and I came to Iowa State College. Oh, okay. February of 46. We stayed in the same room at Friday Hall together. We yep. were packing and packing us in. Room 367. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, 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 we all went over to register, and I, they, they said, well, Elmer Warren, what, what do you want to major in? I said, well, of course, we know all about mechanical engineering. Sure. So I said, mechanical engineering. They said, I said, well, fortunately, one of the guys gave me an aptitude test. Yeah, okay. And he said, Elmer? You're more a people person than a mechanical stuff. Yeah, okay. I said, oh, is that right? <laughs> so I, I majored in industrial education. Right, right. Well, <clears throat> Lowell Carver was the kind of really in charge of the department, really. Wait, was he dean? No. Okay, he was not the dean. He was kind of head of a lot of the shop areas. Yeah, okay. He was my mentor also. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, That summer of 40, 48, 48, yeah. Well, I, I, I joined a few other guys and we went down to the Des Moines Y camp down along the river yeah, okay. near Boone. Mm -hmm. And I was in charge of the craft department uh -huh, okay. all summer. So we had a lot of fun with that too. Yep. Then came back on that old trolley. Oh, okay. From, that's a trolley, remember, it was from downtown Des Moines to Fort Dodge. Yeah. So I use it both ways. So you rode that trolley? Yeah. That, that was electric, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Came overhead. Electric overhead, yeah. Anyway, then <coughs> came back in the fall of 46, 7, okay. Then I graduated with a bachelor's degree in industrial education mm -hmm. in 48. In 48, okay. So you remember Ames then from about 1946 mm -hmm. on how large was this the college, Iowa State College back then? I don't know. Okay. And it grew fast as you know. Yes, oh yeah. There were thousands of us that came yeah. in. Okay. Yeah, the Second World War veterans yeah. really went to school and yeah. 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 Well then well, I went down again and crafts the next summer in that white camp. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> well, uh, you should back up. 
after I got my bachelor's degree in industrial ed in right. 48. Well, I student taught in the spring of 48 down in the old Central Junior High School. Okay, okay. Across from the high school at the time. Yep, yep. And, <clears throat> and that shop was, was one-fourth of the main floor, northwest fourth okay. corner. Had two big rooms in it. Okay. And it had machine shops. And that was a junior high. That was a junior right, high, right. in the central junior high yeah. built building. Yeah. Well, I student taught there. And uh, my supervisor uh, had me do all, you know, whatever. And, <clears throat> and uh, when you know then, the next fall, he left. Went ah. back to Nebraska. Okay. And, and Lowell Carver called and said, hey, I don't want you to get back and do that job. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, he left. And I said, good. So I said, okay. So I started teaching where I had student taught, right there. Mm -hmm. That was 1948. Yeah. And uh, In the fall, okay. Yeah, so I started a number of things that, that hadn't been going on there. I started some metal casting, and that was fun. And of course we did oxy settling them. Right. Arc welding. Right. And did you have auto mechanics then too? I started a little on that. You started, okay. At Allen Motors down on Doug yeah. Do on right. Douglas, yeah. Gave me an old Chevy. Okay. And then and of course at that time, you know, the the east half of that block was all field. Oh yeah. Right. So they pulled it over there in the back behind Central Building. Mm -hmm. And my then student teacher <laughs> and I tore off the body mm -hmm. and uh, cut off the frame. And, and we, we, we hauled in the front end showing the engine mm -hmm. and the radiator the cooling system. And we cut off part of the overhead valve cover so they could see how the valves work. <laughs> and the differential on another stand. We, we cut away the differential so they could kids could see how the gears mashed. Is yes, that right? Yeah. So I started that one too. Yeah. And one one fun one was on metal casting. I caught one boy. He put a, I don't know it was a fifty cent piece, mm -hmm. and he, he cast it in in, in lead. And I caught it. And it looked pretty good. <laughs> it looked yeah. real. I said, now you melt that sucker down right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that was part of the fun. Yeah. But anyway, then I taught there, adult, ed adult education, most of them were ladies, uh, art metal, aluminum, brass, copper. Okay. We'd etch it and, and then uh, plastics. Oh, okay. And, then, and uh, the ladies would drill pretty flowers in the, in the, in oh, the yeah. plastic. Yeah. We'd polish it off and, it, and they'd dye the flowers certain colors. Different colors, right. And <clears throat> things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, the junior and senior girls, high school girls, also did those same things during class. Okay. Was it mandatory that they took industrial ed? Yeah. Okay. Now back to junior high kids, I had these the I think it's eighth grade kids, boys, mm -hmm. no girls. <laughs> they went across the street to home act. Okay. Okay. And uh, and that was in the senior high building, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, over in the senior high building, why Lawrence Simmering was in charge of that area, the wood shop and mechanical drawing. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was it then. Uh, anyway, uh, so I taught the eighth, I think it's eighth grade. All eighth grade boys took this class in some electricity, sheet metal. Oh, okay. Uh, I forgot what else. Two or three things. The whole run of the craft, maybe yeah. some plumbing, and then the, the ninth grade boys uh, optionally sent, signed up to take some more of that. Okay. Uh, Roger Deal, you know Roger Deal by chance? You heard the name, I, I yeah. don't know. He lives over here now. Okay. He married Nancy Nancy Adams, who died. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. But he yeah. kids me now and then. He said. You taught me how to weld and all yeah, that good yeah. stuff. I said, oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Yeah, I remember that little hammer I made yeah, out of yeah. steel. 
<laughs> they're they're all proud of their souvenirs too. Yeah. yeah. I said, well, how the heck are how old are you? He said, seventy-seven. I said, what? Well, I'm eighty-eight. So I said, wow. well, I'm in here. Well, anyway, time flies. I hope the camera heard that. Yeah. Eighty-eight. <laughs> well, I'm one hundred and eighty-eight. I was telling you right around here. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> what was I? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so I taught four years there. And in the summers, I still had some GI Bill left, so I went on and got a master's in education. In education yeah. from Iowa. So Iowa it was State. still Iowa State College then, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. So I got a master's degree then, and then I went that's one or two more summers, mm -hmm. so I didn't get to the doctorate. My, my GI ran out. Right, right. Well, in the meantime, well, in the summer of 51, 52, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. Lowell Carver called me again. Okay. And he said, Elmer, I was in Port Dodge that summer, working at a DX station where we used to, oh, okay. the kids used to hang out. <laughs> and, but he called me and he said, Elmer, I want you to go down and interview for, no, I'm sorry. He did that, so I got in this first job. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Uh, in the spring of 50, yeah, 52, the superintendent called me over and I said, uh oh, <laughs> what did I do? I'm in trouble. And he said, say, Elmer, I want you to be an elementary principal and open a school, a new elementary school. And I said, you what? Yeah. And he said, I said, well, I know you left to teach what you're doing. And I said, well, yes, I do. But he said, well, if you don't like it, well, I'll put you back in the classroom. I said, okay. well, how can I miss? Well, by that time, I had my superintendent certificate, too, so I could do anything in education at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, so in the fall of 52, I opened Edwards School. It was Edwards, then, okay. Yeah, yeah. Were you married? Yeah. Then? Where did you live in Ames then? My first wife and I lived, well, first of all, we lived in Firewell Brown's parents' house on Kellogg. On Kellogg. From okay. 49 to, I don't know, 54 or something like that. Well, how far did Ames go north at that time? You must have been almost at the edge of town, weren't you? Well, 13th was. Well, yeah, it was a gravel road yet, wasn't it? I think so. Edna Speck, who's mm -hmm. 94 or something now, I interviewed her a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and she remembers when the hospital was kind of by itself up on 13th Street. Yeah, and right. I, That's where my three kids were born. It, it, <laughs> the old hospital. Okay. Mary Green. Howard, Howard uh, Hildebrand delivered all three. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Hildebrand was the, uh, the doctor for our children. We came in 62, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Well then, Anyway, so I was principal there for 30 years, let's see, yeah, 30 years, from 52 to 82. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I should back up. Uh, for the first four years I was principal, it was a single section school, mm -hmm. one class, one room for each grade. And, uh, and, and we had a beautiful auditorium, like Meeker does. Okay. I did. And of course, as you know, Edwards is designed exactly as Meeker. Oh, I did not same, know that. Same okay. design, same different, design. different right. range. But, uh, and uh, Herb Hatch started being principal okay. at Meeker. His, on Meeker's second year open, they didn't have a principal the first year. Okay. So he started Meeker in 52 while well, he opened Edwards. Well, your big auditorium was a stage. I saw a picture. Of, of you mm -hmm. accepting or something, a large TV set way back with a few girls yeah. around you. Jerry Litzel got that from me. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gene uh, uh, Harris. Okay. I, oh, Jean, sure. Harris TV, yeah. yeah. Gene uh, sold that to my PTA. Oh, okay. And that picture shows me on the with the with the TV there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I 
I fixed an antenna because it's way up, behind, <laughs> way up behind the curtains. Yeah. Was a little balcony. And so I ran some wires way up there and back up there and into outside. Yeah. So I, I figured I made the antenna for it. Well, you, that was the first TV, black yeah. and white. Yeah. So we used that a lot, and of course we, we read educational moving pictures on the stage. But did the Parent Teachers Association give that to the school to use them? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. And that was yeah. at Edwards, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Jerry Litz will pick that up from you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And anyway, uh, <clears throat> but four years after I opened it, they doubled the size of Edwards. Wow. And uh, let's see. I know the first four years I taught sixth grade half time and principal mm -hmm. half time. Mm -hmm. I taught math and science. And uh, anyway, from four years later, then I was full time principal. And okay. then a few years still later, they tore out the auditorium, which was tragic, but. Yep, okay. The libraries, media centers came in. Mm -hmm. So they just tore out all the chairs and everything, put a great big. Uh, slab, yeah. carpeted, and of course from then on they had, well, I think they started computers about somewhere in there. Yeah, this would be in the 60s then yeah. probably, yeah. Or later than that. Going e even into the 70s. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, the, the senior high school was built up north of where it is now in about the middle 60s, I think, somewhere 65 mm -hmm. or something, you know. <coughs> you remember they built half of the present high school site, and you still used the high school downtown. Yes, right. And then they tried all the kids. Okay. And then a year, yeah. a year yeah. or two later, now it's all up here. Yeah. And then it became Central Junior High there, and of course they tore down the old Central Building. The Central Building, right. And then the city departments and the city police and stuff moved into that building. Yeah. Was that in the 70s? I don't remember when. They just celebrated her 25th anniversary in that building, I think, here yeah. this summer. So, yeah. I think so. Well, then, <clears throat> let's see. Well, oh, I know. In 82, 83, well, I, I'll back up again. Five years before I was going to retire, I told the superintendent mm -hmm. that I was going to retire in June 30th, 1984. 84, yeah. Well, then they could plan because we they were cutting back. Sure. They were cutting back elementary principals, doubling everything up. So, so in 82, 83, I was half time principal okay. at Crawford. What, Crawford? Okay. And the other half, I think I was right. And then the other half, I was assistant to either the superintendent or. or uh, The director of elementary. I forgot which. Okay, okay. So my office every afternoon was on the third floor of old Lincoln Building. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> well, then the next year, I was half time Crawford and quarter time Fellows and quarter time Northwell. Okay, Fellows is that way up the. Uh, right here. Yeah. Nearby. Yeah. And of course, Northwood by my Stevens funeral home there. Yeah, okay. But anyway, so. <clears throat> I was in charge at Fellows and Northwood of all the support staff, the nurses, the arts oh, teachers, okay. uh, PE teachers, all of those special teachers, and all maintenance, mm -hmm. which was right down my alley anyway. For sure. Yeah. So that that was 83, 84. Yep. And then in uh, in about uh, early May, well, they had Crawford people had a big party for me for Oh, good. And some of my old army guys came back for it. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, good. So, I retired on June 30th, 1940. How many of the, the four from Fort Dodge came back from the war? Did all four of you come back? You said you... Yeah, were yeah they did. They, okay. We all made it. They all made it good. This one high school buddy that came with me to college here mm -hmm. in '46. I don't, I don't know if I meant he was he was in the uh, Pacific. And oh, he got okay. shot right through the chest, but he made it. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, I have I kept a list of which was dated April of 2006, and it lists from my A company, 22nd Tank Battalion. All those who die have died. Well, uh, Bernie Rob Robert Bernie was with me. And on, on that December 30th, okay, big shoot up. okay, and uh, Jimmy Brett, who was my tank commander, of course he died. He died. Right yeah. down, so it's, it's even in print. I don't know if you want that or not. That probably isn't. I, I know that you you have this list. Take it. Throw it away. Okay. okay. Well, here, here is a okay. uh, a long. Write up that Rob Lee Rear, one of the guys in the outfit, wrote up, and I forgot what year, but it was a little later. But that was too long for me to read to you. Yeah, sure. That's something. I'll take that and throw it away yeah. too if you want to. Okay. And this is something we can file at the museum as sure. part of the World yeah. War II filing yeah. down. Now, this. Um, yeah, okay. Here's here's a I'll try to make it quick. This is pretty well the pattern which I went. New Chateau, New Chateau the Bastogne on the Bastogne Highway. Shoney La Valley, uh, whatever, 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 to Saint Etienne, the twenty second tank, went to Marlboro to and then a coup, a coup where we fought, and back to Humont for a brief stay, and back to Margaret and a cool to Chascon. That will match up with this map. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's good. And south of Hopalais, we're at the Chacon, a cool area, back to Margaret, to Longchamps area, Campon, Bernon, whatever those are, Ufalis, and back to Montevella, the uh, Campon to Mobile to so That's kind of the track on the map. I think then. so. Yeah. Okay. Then through Bastogne again, and down to Trois Burgess, Siegfried Line. We saw the big bomb, uh, uh, the Siegfried Line where all the yeah yeah shelters well, and everything were. Wow, were well, those big? Yep. Okay. We swamp out. Is this a copy that I can have? You can have the whole thing. Okay. okay. Through the Prum River, Walshine to Wishine, toward Kyle, before the Rhine. Oh, let's see here. We swamp Park through Rochet to the woods near something. <laughs> on through Prum to Wishheim. It's kind of the trail that you you went with yeah. your tank for, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Through Mayan, to Worms, Darmstadt. Um, Vera River. Down to Salamish. Well, that's Salamilis. the kind of documentation that I can uh, use down in the museum, and I'll put it with this map and everything here. Yeah. But we. We've been running about an hour here right now. That's enough. Well, a couple of questions, if I okay. might, just to fill in. You retired in 1985. 84. 84. Uh, what have you done since then? In a just kind of enjoyed life, or? Good question. Uh, uh, <clears throat> at my first United Methodist Church, mm -hmm. I attended a funeral there one day, and uh, uh, some fella who who, was, who then owned the Stevens Memorial Chapel. Oh, okay. Had the funeral, and I, I met him, and, and uh, I was head, head usher at the time. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, how would you like to work with me at the Stevens Chapel? I said, what? Okay. Well, I knew you were there, but... <laughs> and he said, yeah, why don't we have coffee sometime this week? And mm -hmm. So we did. And I said, oh, okay, let's try it. So I got my new suit out. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Worked there 15 years. So 15 years, okay. 
And the Methodist Church is the one across from the post office yeah. downtown. Yeah. And as you know, we're expanding now. Oh yeah, but I also know that I've seen you at many funerals yeah. in that suit and <laughs> and everything. So that's how you got into that. Yeah. So that would bring you up to about 2,000, the year 2,000. Yeah. And I retired from that.